Elon Musk is developing a vehicle that could be a game changer for space travel, dubbed as Starship which will be a transport system capable of carrying up to 100 people, to Mars and beyond with full reusability. SpaceX's long-chased goal has always been to open doors for humanity, to make their life multi-planetary, motivated by the existential threats faced by our reign on planet Earth. By fears such as an asteroid collision that wipes out humanity, speaking at a conference in Mexico some five years ago. Elon Musk said that history is going to bifurcate along with two directions, one path is we stay on Earth forever, and then there will be some eventual extinction event. He has consistently spoken about his lofty dreams of developing habitable cities on Mars, to make it possible he required a space vehicle, that could undertake the task of sending people to the red planet, and it happened to materialize in the shape of a starship. Which is a rocket that could ferry more than 100 people simultaneously. Starship will be powerful enough to launch itself off both the lunar and Martian bodies, but it needs super heavy to get off. The much more massive Earth, the two-part system comprises of the top part which is a Starship rocket, standing ever tall at 120 meters or 394 feet. On a reusable booster called the Super Heavy now that you know their names, we can trickle down to the technicalities of the system, and explore the brilliant engineering behind it powered by Raptor engines. That burn methane as fuel, a fancy nose cone and landing fins, and a capacity to carry at least 100,000 kilograms of payload, to low Earth orbit. The system resembles one from a science comic and seeks excellence, by all means the six engines allow combustion to take place in stages, and their design cuts down the wastage of the propellant. Which is stored in the propellant tanks placed in the middle of the vehicle, known for unpopular decisions Musk chose Methylex as fuel, for the rocket engine which is basically a combination of methane and oxygen, as it can generate a lot of thrust. Another explanation behind the decision is that, a Mars-oriented game plan required a Mars-suitable solution, which must came up with in the form of the rational, that methane could be synthesized from Martian subsurface water, and atmospheric carbon dioxide using the saboteur reaction. This in turn makes the entire ambition less costly, as using Martian resources could help reach a modest level of self-sufficiency. The upper part can house cargo and people, but the bottom, when the booster is where things get interesting like the former, the 70-meter tall booster, will be filled with 3,400 tons of chilled methylex and would be powered by Raptor engines. Though the number of engines keeps updating, it is safe to suggest that the engineers would provide more than 18 million pounds, or mega newtons of thrust, which would enable the system to carry greater payloads to LEO. This will make Super Heavy more powerful than the immense Saturn V launcher, used for the Apollo moon missions in the 1960s and 70s. Super Heavy is just a colossal duo of steel propellant tanks, that is to an extent even simpler than its smaller Starship upper stage, which needs two types of Raptor engines, flaps, a heavy maneuvering thrusters and more. However, at the booster's base SpaceX must design, fabricate and assemble, a nightmarishly crowded and complex mechanical structure capable of mounting fueling, and powering anywhere from 29 to 33 Raptor engines simultaneously. That structure and all associated plumbing must withstand the force and pressure, of more than 2,000 metric tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen, and the 7,500 tons of thrust. Those Raptors can generate that's just the bare minimum though, beyond the extraordinary mechanical stress it must withstand. Super Heavy's thrust section also needs to be able to survive the hellish violent environment, created by almost three dozen powerful rocket engines. On one side, while the structure is effectively half-submerged in a cryogenic fluid, subjecting the puck and dome to brutal thermal conditions. Last but certainly not least, the exterior of Super Heavy's thrust structure must be able to survive the mechanical and thermal hell of hypersonic atmospheric re-entry. With zero cushioning of the blow, the forces involved are difficult to imagine at full thrust, Super Heavy Booster 29 Raptor engines eventually expanding to 33. On future cores will likely produce more than 5,500 metric tons of thrust, making it both the largest and most powerful rocket booster ever built, or tested at full thrust. Those 29 Raptors will consume more than 17 metric tons of cryogenic liquid methane, an oxygen equivalent to around 10 Tesla Model 3, worth of propellant every single second. Every single second, wow, including smaller secondary runs for each Raptor engine super heavy's engine section. 
will likely contain miles of plumbing for highly flammable explosive, and high-pressure liquid and gaseous methane, and oxygen. All 29 Raptors also need to be connected to Super Heavy's power supplies, and avionics systems, demanding still more miles of wiring. Ultimately Musk says that, the next generation of Starship's Raptor Engine 2.0, is a major improvement, in simplification presumably making life a bit easier for the engineers. That have to design Super Heavy's hellish engine section, plumbing, and the technicians that have to fabricate and assemble it. However, there's just no getting around the fact, that a single rocket booster with dozens of engines, is going to have an extraordinarily complex thrust section. In 2017 Musk boasted that, even if he gets the Starship to orbit without any refueling, you will get around 150 tons to low Earth orbit, which is pretty amazing for such a setup without any overall refueling. We expect to have a payload capability of 150 tons to Earth orbit to refuel the spacecraft, would simply go by ahead and dock with another Starship. That would function as a propellant depot and would be their circling Mother Earth, Already Musk emphasized that you can utilize control thrusters, to accelerate in the direction that you want to empty to transfer propellant. Which would then be a piece of cake, for the mating starship for lengthy and arduous trips, which can take up to 9 months to and from Mars. Musk is looking to install around 40 cabins in the payload area, near the front of the upper stage, where each cabin would be able to house around 5 or 6 people. That can make the starship carry people to destinations in the cosmos, including fancy planets like Jupiter, which is a long-term project. Starship might also play a role in NASA's Artemis program, which aims to establish a long-term human presence on the moon, and NASA cannot help but be intrigued by the ambition. Like all of us and has awarded a 135 million US dollar contract to SpaceX, to upgrade its functionality to that of a crewed lunar lander last year. Which is a big achievement for Musk and his team, however it comes with a design change, that lacks the flaps which are necessary for a journey back to Earth. Instead the Starship human landing system, would remain in space after its initial launch from Earth to be used for multiple trips, between lunar orbit and the Moon's surface. Such a system could even be used for high-speed journeys, between different destinations on Earth which will ensure that SpaceX would have to reach a high level of precision, and give a tough time to aviation companies, when it comes to the travel times, on offer and as no move comes without a downside. Musk's company has made the Starship enter the atmosphere at a 60-degree angle, in a belly-flop manner, which is too reliant on it which has fueled skepticism, but he has tacked it by assuring that, he is trying to create a drag rather than a lift. As the Starship approaches the landing it should then be able to flip the vehicle into a vertical position, after executing an engine burn and using the Raptors. Which shows that Musk has done his homework, and is not intimidated by the complexity of the task, or the number of failures with Starship landings, and is completely focused at launching one of these vehicles soon. Enough Starship and Super Heavy will start flying soon, if all goes according to Musk's plan. The billionaire entrepreneur recently said that SpaceX aims to launch Starship to orbit, sometime this year, and that he envisions the Starship Super Heavy Duo being fully operational by 2023. Thanks for watching this video, and it's a super interesting topic if you like this make sure to subscribe, if you have any crazy ideas about what we should cover in next video please comment it below, and we'll see if we can get to it so thanks again for watching and goodbye.